All right, this is uh, section P5. It's called factoring polynomials. We're going to factor out the greatest common factor, learn how to factor by grouping factor trinomials with leading coefficient not one, factor trinomials, and factor binomials. So first of all, we need to uh, come up with a plan. And here's our plan. Anytime we're going to try to factor, we're going to follow these little guidelines. Uh, the first thing we're going to try to do always is to factor out the greatest common factor. There are two reasons that we do this. One reason we do this is because if you factor out the greatest common factor first, it may allow you to um, to work with smaller numbers. And I always like working with smaller numbers, so that's usually a big time help. So we always try to factor out the greatest common factor first. Another reason is is because that's the only factoring that you may be able to do. So uh, yeah, it, we may just be finished after we factor out the greatest common factor. One thing that I'm going to recommend that you do right now, anytime you have a polynomial whose leading coefficient is negative, I kind of like to factor out the leading coefficient of negative 1 first before I try to factor the polynomial. So kind of keep that in mind as we're going through factoring. Uh, number two, what we're going to do is we're going to identify the number of terms. And we're going to learn how to factor two term, three term, and four term polynomials. So with that being said, we'll start with how to factor out the greatest common factor. So as you can see, uh, our first example, 18x to the third plus 27x squared. So it's a cubic binomial, and what we're going to try to do is factor out uh, the greatest common factor. Well, there's two things that we always need to look at. One is the greatest common factor of the coefficients, and then the second thing is also the greatest common factor of the uh, variables. So in this one, we have 18x cubed plus 27x squared. So in terms of our variables, 18 and 27, uh, both of those are divisible by 9. So we're going to factor out a 9. Uh, in terms of our variables, we have 3x's here and 2x's here. So we can at least take 2x's out of each. Uh, to get the remaining polynomial, what we're going to do is take this and divide it into 18. 9 will go into 18 twice. And if we had 3x's and took out 2, there must be 1 left. 9 will go into 27 three times. There were two x's and we took out two, so there's no x's left. Okay, so that's the factored form of that polynomial. Notice, uh, and one thing you'll hear later, is that you're finished factoring a polynomial if the factor is linear. Okay, you can't factor anymore. You can't factor monomials and you can't factor a linear binomial aside from factoring out the greatest common factor. So we know if we factor out the greatest common factor, we end up with a linear uh, term, then you can't factor it anymore. Good. Moving right along. Oh, another thing you can always do, it always checks. So uh, if you're ever factoring and you don't know if you got the right answer, just multiply these two things together to get this. Multiply those two things together to get this. Look at the next one. The next one's a little bit more difficult. As you can see, we have x squared, parentheses x minus 3, and then plus 5 times x minus 3. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to factor out the greatest common factor. Well, if you say it, x squared times x minus 3, 5 times x minus 3, hopefully you'll see it, that the greatest common factor is this x minus 3. So that's actually what we're going to factor out. So we're going to factor out the uh, nice little x minus 3. And when we do this, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take this term, and when you divide this by x minus 3, you're left with x squared. When you take this term and divide it by x minus 3, you're left with a positive 5. That's definitely one way to think about it. Another way is to go and think about just variables. So 2x plus 3x. When you add 2x and 3x together, you get 5x. But the reason that you get 5x is because you have a common factor of x, and you're actually adding the coefficients together. So if you look at that in this concept, the common term right here is x minus 3. And then all we're going to do is add our coefficients together. Well, in the last example, we could actually add the two numbers together to get 5. But here, those are not like terms, so we can't add them together. So either way, we'll get you the same answer, uh, but it's a kind of just a different thought process. And of course, the commutative property of multiplication says it doesn't matter the order. We'll get the same answer. 